Hello, welcome to the session of Talking Tech Girls and Women in ICT Geospatial Edition. My name is Gong Yue Chang, and I'm a master's student in cartography. Today, I'm delighted to be having a discussion about geospatial careers with Rohini Swaminathan. Rohini is an emergency specialist from the UNICEF New York. Talking Tech is a series celebrating girls and women in tech being recorded around the world between Girls in ICT Day 2020 to Girls in ICT Day 2022. Girls in ICT Day is an international day marked on the fourth Thursday of each April. In 2021, it was the 22nd of April. The objectives of Girls in ICT Days are to help create a global environment that empowers and encourages girls and young women to consider studies and careers in the growing field of information and communications technology. Through the series, we hope to inspire girls and younger women with information about a range of ICT careers and bring before a broader audience some of the role model women in ICT and share information about their career journeys. We want to share with you diverse examples of how ICT is being used to support the achievement of sustainable development goals and showcase of a few initiatives supporting girls to consider ICT studies and future careers. The Talking Tech, uh, the Talking Tech series is brought to you by the International Telecommunications Union, the United Nations International Computing Center, and the Office of the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Youth and it is in support of EQUALS, the global partnership for gender equality in the digital age. This interview is part of the geospatial edition of the Talking Tech series. This special edition aims to shed light on experiences of women and girls working and studying in the field of geospatial technology. MSC Cartography and the United Nations Geospatial Network is pleased to be a partner of this special edition and hosts this session today. To provide a brief background on our partner, UN's Geospatial Network is a network of geospatial experts of the UN system. Its mission and vision is to strengthen the coordination and coherence of geospatial information management within the UN system. To transform the lives of people, places, and planet, a better world with geospatial. For more information, you can visit the website of UN Geospatial Network. The geospatial sector is male-dominated. Empirical observations support this statement. There is an under-representation of women CEOs, directors, and heads of GIS operations in the private and public sessions as well as in academia. A more gender-balanced geospatial sector is something that I'm passionate about, so I'm delighted to now shift to your conversation with Rohini here. So, hi Rohini, welcome to our conversation. To start with, could you please introduce yourself to us basically what your current position is. Thank you so much for having me here, Tangong. I currently work as the emergency specialist with UNICEF headquarters in New York, and I focus on using geospatial technology for risk analysis and to ramp up emergency preparedness across the world. So I would like to hear more about that. When and how you got here into geospatial and what has influenced or inspired you to during you your career? Um, I, I think it started very young. I was always interested in geography. Um, even in middle school, I was obsessed with maps as a child. I would spend hours just going through an atlas. Uh, growing up in South India, I also saw several natural hazards around us. And I wanted to pursue a career which combines my passion for geography, uh, how I can understand and work towards addressing the impacts of natural hazards. So that's how I did my bachelor's in geoinformatics in India. And later I went to the US to get my master's in geomapics. Uh, I started my career off with an excellent program called NASA Develop based in the US. Probably one of the best experiences in my life. I fell in love with uh, using Earth observations um, for social causes in particular. Um, and for the past six years, I've been working mm -hmm. with various UN agencies across the world, mostly in using geospatial tech for disaster mm -hmm. preparedness and response. Oh, that's really a fantastic journey. There must be so many stories along this way. And I also assume that you have also encountered obstacles. Could you tell us some of those challenges you faced and how did you overcome them? 
uh, it's never without obstacles, right? Like there is always yeah. something that, that you have to face when you're growing up, especially in a developing mm-hmm. country. I think my biggest challenge started when I was choosing to specialize in geoinformatics as a, as a bachelor's. Like at that time in India, people expected you to become a doctor or an engineer in a known yeah. field, or you became a computer scientist who went into IT. And many thought I was gambling with my future by choosing something lesser known. Um, and to be honest, I did regret my decision for the first few years in college. I wasn't quite sure if this is what I wanted to do. But until I started getting more and more experiences um, through internships at various places, I didn't realize how much I actually enjoyed working with satellite data and building geospatial applications. So I think uh, it needed a lot of patience to overcome this challenge of questioning yourself. Yeah. But now when I look back, I have no regrets. I believe also many of the girls are struggling with the same situation. I personally also met many people who have no idea what geospatial is and what I'm studying. So what quality of character do you think is your greatest strength that help you go through this and bring you to here? And also, would you like to share your own weaknesses and how have you overcome them? That's a tough question. Um, okay, I guess I would say my biggest strength is I've never been afraid to take risks. That's probably my greatest strength. I am unapologetically adamant to go after what I wanted, uh, be it leaving for the US for my master's when nobody in my family has ever been abroad um, to study or quitting a job if I didn't find it fulfilling. I was never afraid to move on. And uh, I, I really enjoy working, which really helps when people talk about work-life balance. I really don't see them separately. Work is a huge part of what I want to do with my life. And I choose to do what really makes it fun. And, and I want to show up with more enthusiasm every day. Mm-hmm. And if it, if it reduces, I don't hesitate to, to go on to the next challenge to quit and move on. I think that is my biggest chance. Uh, on the other hand, my weaknesses would be my general lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. There were many instances when I should have spoken out and I chose to be polite instead of speaking up and standing up for myself. Uh, I think it's partly cultural where we are raised that way and partly a personality issue, which I'm still dealing with. And I now consult with many similar women across the world trying to understand how they overcome sort of this imposter syndrome or how they took advantage of that. Uh, so perhaps that would be my biggest weakness there. It's really inspiring to hear that. Thank you. And for people in this field, especially for students like me, we are also interested to know what do you see as the future of geospatial tech? Is there any changes that you want to see in the happening in this field? If it hasn't happened already, mm-hmm. I think geospatial tech will be an integral part of our lives. Yeah. Even today, it's all around us, right? Like from Google Maps to checking the weather, calling an Uber. We, we started relying on it unconsciously. It is everywhere around us. I think in the future, it will be even more integrated in our lives from the Internet of Things to all the buzz around artificial intelligence, big data, machine learning coming in. Also, I don't think satellite imagery has ever been this accessible. Right now, there are more and more satellites. It's getting cheaper. And hopefully in the future, there will be a better linkage between all this innovative technology and the humanitarian applications. Currently, we have built a lot of use cases, but I cannot confidently say we use them to its fullest potential yet. Uh, One other thing I would really like to see in the future is uh, to to introduce GIS, geospatial tech in schools along with geography. I think more and more I see that happening in these developed countries. But it would be great to introduce younger children to this to this amazing, fascinating field. I'm also looking forward to this happening in our near future. So back to our topic of girls and women in tech. What do you think about the gender gap? And have you encountered it in your own experience? Uh, uh, absolutely. Thanks for this question. It's, it's my favorite cause that I'm working very hard towards. And I'm very passionate about this. Uh, gender gap in this field is a real shame. Uh, back in 2006, when I was starting my bachelor's, we were almost 50% women in a small South Indian university in India, you know? And ever since I left, I didn't see that anywhere. 
Um, I think in many parts of Asia, the gender gap is closing faster, but I don't have good statistics around the world to see how, how it really is. But if I have to just rely on my personal experience, it's very, very low, around maybe 20 to 30% at the best in most of the places I have worked with. And even worse, as it gets to senior management, you hardly ever see a women senior geospatial leader, um, be it the UN or any other organizations I've been associated with. Um, in the, on that front, I currently serve as the executive board member of a professional network called Women in Geospatial Class, where we are around 2,000 uh, women and determined to promote gender equality in this field. Uh, it's, it's quite a sensitive topic. It's not as simple as just saying we need more women in this field, because I, uh, I have come across many who ignore a women's qualifications on the premise that they were hired only to fill in the gender quota. And I think that is particularly offensive. Uh, so we have to give equal space for women while ensuring that their qualifications are in question. Yeah. So that's, that's my biggest dream. Uh, my, my biggest dream is to see gender equality organically happening as we make more space. Uh, say, for instance, we go into a conference and there happens to be a panel with majority or equal number of women without even trying. Uh, I, I have no doubt that it will happen. It's going to take a lot of work, a lot of advocacy efforts uh, and promotion, but um, I believe we still have a lot of work left to do in that. I also believe so. For girls and women in geospatial, do you have any career or tech advice for them? Oh, giving advice makes me a bit older now. I, I don't know if I'm wise enough for that, but I'll try. Um, I think if I, look back 10 years, 15 years ago to my younger self, I would say, I would reinforce this idea in my head, don't give up trying. Because that's the only thing I relied on. I held on to that thing. Um, I, I can give an example. There was one particular year, not long ago, I applied to 72 jobs that year and I got one. And it turned out to be a really good one. Um, I even keep a folder called their loss in my Gmail and it has hundreds of these rejects in there. I just never quit. I don't, I don't, give up. And I think that's one big advice. Uh, it, I, I don't think, especially younger women, shouldn't be afraid to take risks. I mean, move mountains if you have to. And um, one of my favorite quotes is what Vankari Matai of Kenya once said, when you know who you are, you're free. And women tend to think too much about how they are perceived. When you try harder, people might label you as, oh, she's over ambitious. And I always say, great, so be it. Keep being over ambitious. I think we need more and more over ambitious girls and women get into this field. And I, I don't think anyone should let a woman feel that they cannot do something just because they are a woman. And that is the core of what I want to tell girls in college and masters today is that there's nothing that they cannot do if they keep trying. And mm. I I remain fascinated in that aspect to see more and more younger women, especially like yourself, coming into this field. So let me pause here and turn the tables. Tell me more about you. What, what's your journey? What's your story so far? I would begin at my high school that I went to a bilingual class in my high school. And I always believe that languages can open you up to a new world. So I choose to study German as my third language. And then it's science nature for me to have my university also in Germany. And I finished my bachelor's in geography at the Humboldt University of Berlin. And then I came here to this Erasmus modules program to study typography. Oh, that's, that's interesting. And, and what a coincidence. My journey started with learning German. Because of German, I got an internship in Germany, and that's how it got kick-started. So absolutely agree with you. Languages make a world of difference, and, and it's good to invest in them. But how did you decide to do your studies in geospatial tech? My systematic view of geography actually came from my high school. I had a really great geography teacher who can guide us to explore the world in a very small classroom. So I was amazed by that time how things are specially connected and hu how humans and environment are mutually affecting. So I decided to study geography for my bachelor's degrees. Then I find what an important role this technique is playing nowadays. It's like the basic of all the 
analyzes and visualizations. So that's the reason I want to go deeper to study in the geospatial tech and to study cartography. I think you're already the present that I was talking in the future. I wanted more and more children to learn in high school. So it's like you already did that. That's, that's great to hear. Um, so you're, you're also in such an interesting master's program, Cartography MSA. Uh, what do you like most about it so far? Oh yeah, it's really an interesting program. I would recommend uh, it to people. I really like things that when you're doing the projects, you find how the things are linked and interact with one another. And both ge geography and cartography, they are more an empirical study. So you have the chance to think about the practical, the realistic issues. I'm so excited about learning how geospatial tech today can change the way of life, for example, the mobility, the urban planning and management, and the nature protection things. And there are many diverse topics in this field, and they are so close to us. That's so true. I, I mean, there are some fantastic applications of geospatial tech out there, and it's even hard to choose which one it is. So, uh, thank God, I really, really dread this when people ask mm -hmm. me this question, but I'm going to ask you anyway, just in case if it helps anybody, any other women listening to us today. What are your future plans? What is the next step? Mm -hmm. what, what would you do after your master's? Oh, yeah, that's really a tough question for me. And first, of course, finish my master's study, but I'm actually still weighing my options after then. I can see many possibilities and directions in this field. Your special is really wide. It's hard for me actually to figure out now what exactly I'm going to do after this master's. I'm, I'm really glad you said that in, a, in one way. I yeah. was exactly the same when I was in grad school. I, I think it's actually better in some ways that you do not want to narrow it down to one field. And it will give you this breadth of options that you can try different streams of work. And that's exactly what I did. I, I did, um, I worked in a mining company for an internship. I worked in university research and then the research program under NASA and the UN in different application areas. And then I realized it's best to try different things and identify what works the best for you. So I'm, I'm glad you said that, really. Uh, do you have any messages for other young women in tech? I have to say it may be also a message to myself. I want me to keep in mind that it's also never late to try new things. And we should always open the mind to receive the information from the world, to think from different perspectives, and which is also possible in nowadays. And if you have the chance, be active and chat with different people. And also, I think one of the most important things is to enjoy what you're doing and have fun. I guess that, that advice applies to me too. I think it's crucial to enjoy what we are doing. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for, for having, having me in this interview. Thank you so much, Rahini. Uh, that wraps up our session today for Talking Tech Girls and Women in ICT, your special edition. I really enjoy our chat today. Also, a big thanks to all our viewers for watching. Thank you.